Welcome everyone. We have got two breaks tonight. The first one is Leaf Metal Draft Football. It's a half case of jumbos and that means we get 10 autographs per box and one of them's going to be slabbed. It's, you know, should be a pretty good fun little break. And then after that we're going to break a 12 box inner case of Diamond Kings Baseball. However, there's a little pre-break information that we always go over before we start uh, ripping our packs, so we're going to roll onward with that. First up, of course, feedback, right? It's automated. That's just so you don't ever have to wait on me. Anytime you leave positive feedback for me, you're going to instantly get positive feedback in return. Second message there, of course, the far more important of the two is simply to say thank you. I do appreciate everyone being here and spending part of your NFL draft night with me. We're taking a look right now at breaks that are coming up. This is the stuff that's already up and running on eBay that we'll be breaking over the next few days. Tomorrow night we're going to start at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific because it's another new release day. We've got National Treasures Basketball coming out tomorrow. We'll break a case of that along with another 12 box case of Contenders Draft Football. Saturday will find us opening a five box case of TriStar Game Day Greats autographed football jerseys and a half case of Gypsy Queen Baseball, which is the back half of a case. On Sunday, that's another 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific start time. We'll break our uh, third and final case of 2018 Honors Football. I typed in 2019 because I'm a doofus. I was typing in 19 contenders and got 19 on the brain. It's 2018, of course, uh, contenders fo or honors football that just came out recently. And then a half case of 2019 Bowman baseball, also the back half of a case. On Monday night, we'll be opening triple play baseball. That's got an auto, uh, three autograph memorabilia items in there. Another five box case of our TriStar autograph football jerseys and a second case of National Treasures Basketball. Tuesday night, we'll get back into Flawless Football, and we'll open a third case of Contenders Draft Picks Football, and the one that is on Tuesday the 30th, by that point, we'll be breaking them by team names and no longer by first letter of last name. Uh, so I guess what, tomorrow night uh, is the last one we'll be doing by first letter of last name. Shipping information, everything tonight is a paid shipping break, and I am anticipating it will be on the way to you approximately Monday. As always, if I can get something out to you faster than the projected date, I absolutely will. And if something unexpected happens, it could always roll a day later, but as of now, I expect it to be Monday. Uh, everybody's going to pull cards in Diamond Kings. We don't need to worry about consolation cards there. If you are in Leaf Metal Draft and you happen to get skunked in that one, uh, you are still going to get Consolation cards. They will ship out with the rest of the break since it is a paid shipping break. So first up tonight, four box half case of 2019 Leaf Metal Draft Jumbo uh, half case break. This is break number five of this particular product. Everything we're opening tonight ended tonight on eBay Thursday night, the 25th of April, NFL Draft Night. And of course, team. This in this case, it's not team names. We sold by first letter of the last name. You'll see that on the left, and our winning bidder for each spot is across from it on the right-hand side. Uh, I start to scroll down through Diamond Kings, but guess what? We don't do that yet. <laughs> we scroll through that when it's time to break Diamond Kings. Got a little ahead of myself, didn't I? All right. So um, this is a half case of loose boxes. Somebody else got uh, the other half of the case, so we don't have to worry about taking things out and numbering them because we got half the case, and half the case is what we're going to open up here. And uh, I do know the background went out of focus, and I know it's still out of focus, but don't sweat that because we're going to be looking at things uh, up much closer, and we're going to be able to see them quite well, so don't worry about that. And our Leaf Metal Draft Jumbo is a little different configuration. Actually, it's a lot different configuration than the way we opened uh, our regular Leaf Draft that wasn't Jumbo. In here, we're going to find 10 autographs per box. And one of those autographs in each box is uh, going to be a one-of-one one slabbed autograph. So uh, we're going to have 40 total hits and four of them. 
are supposed to be one of ones, which means 10% uh, of the break is going to be one of ones. Not too bad, huh? And uh, if anybody happens to be watching the draft and you want to kind of keep me posted on things, I would not be sad about that at all. So far, there have been some really odd things happening. Not not re really in the first, like, two or three picks. They went pretty much the way we would have expected. But as we've gotten farther down past about the third pick there, um, yeah, things have gone kind of funky, haven't they? Not the way I would have expected on many of them anyway. Ezekiel is hanging out with us tonight. So is Echo. Echo says he needs some G. All right, we're going to try to find you some G. Um, but meanwhile, we're starting out here with the K, Kyle Kemp. Kyle, I believe, is the only guy who's in for the Ks. And that is numbered to 35. Next up is Jeffrey Simmons. Jeffrey is numbered to 25. Then we have this whole group. I tell you what, this whole group just, there we go. They're, they're trying to slide up in their top loaders. Miles Sanders also 25. Clayton Thorson for the T's. Followed by, oh look, a second Clayton Thorson for the T's. This one has the wave pattern, but neither one of them were numbered. Anthony Ratliff Williams. So when we pull these guys that have hyphenated last names, of course, their la his last name is Ratliff hyphen Williams. So it's going to go to the first letter which is the R, first letter of the last name. So Anthony Ratliff Williams to 15 for the R's. A Bryce Love Redemption for the L. My man Benny Snell for the S and numbered to 35. Alex Barnes for the B is numbered to 7. And our slabbed one of one. Oh, I didn't realize these were. Um, let's find something to set behind this. I didn't realize really they were acetate clear. That'll make it a little bit easier to see anyway. It is LJ Scott for the S. Now these are not graded. They've just been uh, slabbed. Okay. So, but still pretty cool to have a guaranteed one of one in every box, I think. Jay Allen, you can't stay up for it, but you're going to look for some fillies in Diamond Kings. All right, we will try our very best, Jay Allen, to get you some fillies out of Diamond Kings. Dexter Lawrence for the L to 35. Then we have Deontay Johnson, J. Mac Wilson, Number to 20 for the W. It is Edo Smith for the S. Next up is Ryan Finley to 25 for the F. Here's uh, Jakai. Is it Polite? Polite? Politi? Could be any of those probably. Anyway, it's for the P. Caleb Wilson to 10 W. DK Metcalf. He was still on the board the last that I saw. He is uh, to M. Then we have Amani, you know I butchered this, or a Jawari. <laughs> I'm sure that's really wrong. It's an O. And our slabbed hit, oh, it's Marquise Brown. Nice for the Bs. And again, of course, all of these uh, slabbed cards are one of ones in the jumbo version. So, woohoo! Kirk is here. Hi, Kirk. How are you today, Kirk? You hanging in there? Doing all right? It seems like we're going to have an extra slapped card in this box. I had some other people uh, report that they had that with some of their breaks. that They had some boxes that had additional slabbed cards beyond the one. So, cool. Looks like we're going to have a bonus. Hakeem Butler to 20 for the Bs. Justice Hill to 5H. David Montgomery for the M to 15. Next up is Tyree Brady for the B. Chase Venovich for the W. This is Jamar Jamarius Way, also W. And then we have Debo Samuel for the S. We got a couple 
of slabbed cards. Whoops, I got somebody still hanging out on the front of them. <laughs> Will Greer for the G. He was just kind of sitting there. Noah Fant for the F bidding position. Uh, of course, his teammate, TJ Hawkinson, has already been drafted, but Fant was still on the board the last I saw. Granted, that's been a few minutes ago. We got a bonus slabbed card in here, and that would be uh, Jelks for the Jays. Jalen Jelks. Kirk, you need some good Diamond Kings tonight. Okay, we're going to try to make that happen. Oh, John. John has given me some updates. Good, thank you. The Packers took Rashawn Gary. All right. Well, that's uh, a reasonable a reasonable choice. I'm going to tell you what. I think the Raiders kind of reached, and I was really surprised, super surprised, that um, the Giants went with Daniel Jones. I mean, I that... That got me, and I was surprised that Josh Allen was on the board as far uh, down as he was, but, you know, one, two, three came out about the way you'd expect, and then odd after that. To 20, it's L.J. Scott for the S. DeMarcus Lodge, the L. Uh, this is the man that I think they reached for. <laughs> this is Clellan Farrell, or F uh, I say Farrell, I think they say it a little differently, but anyway, Pharrell, I think is how they say it, so I guess it's Pharrell, if I can remember that, Jordan Scarlett to seven for the uh, S, Emmanuel Hall for the H, Riley Ridley to 20 for the R's, there's Humphrey with a redemption, Damian Harris to 15 for the H, and Anthony Johnson for the Jays. Our final slab card out of this product is Zach Allen for the A's. So not Josh Allen, but Zach Allen. So we ended up with five slabbed cards instead of the four we were expecting. So a little ahead of the game there. And let's recap this real quickly. Hi, Greg. How's, how's things going with you, sir? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you know, allergy season and then the rain really gets it ramped up. So I'm not going to read all the names and numbers off as we recap because, of course, uh, that would be kind of the equivalent of doing the break again. But what we are doing is just spinning through them all here a second time for anyone who perhaps came in late or... You just need a second look at it, whatever the case may be. It's uh, now's your time. Now's your time, your moment in the sun. And this will be the last of the leaf metal draft. Now I do have, we'll have more. There's all kinds of other leaf draft. Leaf Ultimate, Leaf Trinity. There's tons of all kinds of others. So we'll be getting some of the other, but this is the last of the leaf metal. So all of these that are slabbed, of course, are one of ones. That's uh, Zach Allen. I just put the paper behind it so you can see it easier. It's Jalen Jelks, because some of them are clear acetate. Not all of them, obviously. Noah Fant for the F. In fact, I guess only the first one was. <laughs> Marquise Brown for the B. But I already got the piece of paper. And L.J. Scott, that's the one that actually needed the piece of paper behind it, for the S. And that was the acetate. Okay, so that gets Leaf Metal Draft out of the way. Now, uh, this, of course, is the start of a new Master Case for Diamond Kings. And really, a Master Case is, is very simply put, it's just two 12-box cases in a bigger box. Usually I don't even worry about uh, asking which part, if you want to open one versus the other, because they're both sealed 12 box cases, but you know, why not? Since it's draft night, we can, we'll draft which uh, side of the master case you guys and gals want to open. So what do you guys want? The left side or the right side of the master case? It's a sealed 12 box case either way. So once again, if you missed this earlier, um, our breaks tonight, I'm anticipating them to ship around Monday. As always, if I can get it out faster, I will. If something goes off the rails, it could go a day later. Right now, Monday is my best projection. 
Diamond Kings doesn't need to worry about consolation cards. Every team will pull cards. And Leaf Metal Draft, if your bidding position didn't pull anything, you are still going to get something in the mail, a uh, consolation card package, and it will ship out when the rest of the break ships. Now we are on and upward, onward and upward to our spreadsheet. This is a 12-box case of 2019 Diamond Kings Baseball. As I said, it's an inner case. Uh, it is case number five and also ended tonight on eBay Thursday night, the 25th of April. Same format that you've grown to know and love. You have your team names there on the left-hand side and the user IDs of our winning bidders across from each team on the opposite side. And does anybody type in? Let me look over here. Nobody even typed in. You guys are not even like, yeah, you don't care, right? Or left or whatever. Okay, then um, eh, we'll just do it in random then. We'll just put it in there and and just let random do it since you guys usually have opinions about this sort of thing, but I guess not tonight, huh? Not tonight. So let's get ourselves over here. And this is pretty simple. I'm just going to type in left and right and hit random three times. All right, we're not going to use the first result or the second result. Here's our third and final result. It comes up as the right hand side. So that means our uh, our inner case, which again is just two 12 box cases and a master case. Our inner case tonight is going to be the one on the right hand side of this giant master case. So give me a minute to get the inner case out, and then we'll have to get the then we'll have to get the boxes out of the inner case. Oh, I apologize in advance. I know this is making the table shake. Sorry. <laughs> All right, there's that. Let me get the other half of this case out of our way here, out of my way more specifically, and then we'll be getting ready to roll here momentarily. All right, now then, let's start getting our boxes out of here. So, of course, uh, probably many, most, maybe all of you have broken Diamond Kings before, but for anybody who might not have, we are looking for two hits per box. The hits can be autographs or memorabilia or autographed memorabilia, you know, together on one card. So some combination of that, but two hits per box. Then, of course, there's going to be tons and tons of uh, inserts and, and uh, you know, some numbered cards and artist proof and various things of that nature that we'll stop and talk about a little more as we go through. I gotta get these last boxes out of here. I'm trying to get them to cooperate. They wedge them in here pretty well. I have to say, they don't uh, leave you much room. Not much margin of error. All right, so again, out of the first box, we will spend a little bit more time talking about the types of inserts and things than in our future boxes. I can't even get this in the world. <laughs> future boxes will buzz through that stuff a little more quickly just for the uh, essence of time management and to not keep everybody up all night long. That sort of thing. So, Friday, uh, raise your hand if you're going to be watching the Toronto Blue Jays play on Friday. <laughs> yeah, right? Finally, finally, Vlad Guerrero Jr. on his way up to the big leagues. First game is going to be Friday. So, I think everybody's going to be anxiously waiting to see how that kid does. I mean, probably even if you're not a Blue Jays fan, you you know who that kid is. You probably know who his dad is. And I think everybody's probably looking forward to 
watching him play. I know I am. Truthfully, they probably could have even brought him up last year and, and left him up, but you know, the old, the good old service time manipulation and all that fun stuff. The Dolphins took Christian Wilkins. Oh, oh, that's an interesting choice too. Okay. That's, uh, hmm. Yeah, that is odd. <clears throat> I'm expecting that somebody is going to put together some kind of trade package for, um, Josh Rosen, you know, now that Arizona grabbed uh, Kyler with the first pick of the draft. I'm kind of surprised we haven't heard anything about that yet, but I guess maybe whatever they're trading, maybe it's going to be second round stuff. So we have a redemption, and it, we're not going to flip it just quite yet because we save that stuff and we flip it at the end of the break. So what I'm going to do, I've got to create a little housekeeping spot. That's our housekeeping spot. I guess that box can still sit there. It's going to sit right there in that housekeeping spot until the end of the break. Then we'll flip it over along with any other redemptions that we might find. So flashback cards, um, we're going to see loads of them. Most of them are not numbered. You will notice that that particular one says Montreal. That brings up an interesting point about this product. There are lots of things going on in this product in terms of uh, former teams and old time players and all that kind of stuff. One of the things you need to know is that cards stay with their franchises. In that case, the former Montreal Expos happen to be the current Washington Nationals. So that card goes to the Nationals. Meanwhile, here comes our case hit. It is our downtown insert for Yelich and the Milwaukee Brewers. So nice to see downtown show up. Our last case, they somehow didn't manage to uh, give us one. <laughs> Which, I mean, technically, I don't think they specifically state that it's guaranteed to be in every case. You know how Panini does things. But typically... Uh, you do find one in a 24 box master case and typically uh, at least according to many of you who have watched multiple breaks tell me that there's usually a cut signature in every 24 box case we had one in the first one we didn't have one in the second one so I don't know what to expect in this one but of course we'll have half of it left to break anyway despite uh, whatever we do tonight patrick wisdom this is for the texas rangers and it is numbered to 25 couple of nice looking relics there heirs to the throne we're going to find a lot of these cards um now when they're the same team on both sides like this one is we don't really have to worry about them too much but there are a handful of them that have different teams on them. One on one team on one side, another team on the opposite side. Those that have different teams will be setting up there in housekeeping and we will, of course, give them out uh, at the end of the break. Anytime we find a little card turned around backwards like that, it's technically what Panini would call a short print. Ken Griffey Jr. insert, the insert series is called uh, DK205. But, you know, I say technically a short print because, truthfully, Panini prints an awful lot of their quote-unquote short prints. Uh, I would say more than tops prints of theirs in general, but that's just, uh, you know, take it for what it's worth. Now, this is an example, by the way, of one of these old-time guys with a different franchise that uh, we've got to talk about. So, he was a Philadelphia A, not the Phillies, but the Philadelphia A's. And the Philadelphia A's of old are the current Oakland A's. So those cards that say Philadelphia and are uh, blue up there in the corner are typically the ones that are the Philadelphia A's and they will end up going to Oakland. Similarly, Satchel Paige here, he did not play for the St. Louis Cardinals. He played for the St. Louis Browns, the former St. Louis Browns are the current Baltimore Orioles. So those cards go to the Orioles. It's Joe Jackson uh, framed for the White Sox and a Kirby Puckett insert. We will also have uh, New York 
New York Giants in here. Again, old time guys, like early 1900 kind of guys. And the former New York Giants are the current San Francisco Giants. So that's where those will go. Portraits insert Javi Baez for the Cubs. I think there's one um, Milwaukee Brave in here that's Warren Spawn. Of course, that's the current Atlanta Braves. And there's one, um, somebody else in here. What was the other one? There's another one. Oh, there's a Boston Brave in here, and of course the former Boston Braves also are the are the current Atlanta Braves. Gallery of Stars insert, loads of those uh, as well. Boston Celtics, aww, I didn't know he passed away today. Um, you know I'm going to butcher his name, I always do, but anyway, I didn't know he died today, Brandon. Huh. Walter Johnson, this is uh, the Washington Senators. You'll note it says 1919 down there in the corner. So the, the Washington Senators, of course, have been multiple things. But the Senators from 1901 to 1960 became the Minnesota Twins. So that goes to the Twins. Rizzo for the Cubbies. And then the rest of these, uh, I think that's kind of the highlight reel of things that that go to teams other than maybe what you would expect unless you happen to know the franchise history. If I see any others, I'll let you know, but I think that's the general gist of the ones that might be shifted. Uh, Brooklyn Dodgers, of course, are the current Los Angeles Dodgers. That was Pee Wee Reese. This is an example of what the New York Giants cards look like, and again, those are current San Francisco Giants. So, all right, now that we've explained all that and all that hopefully makes sense to everybody, the rest of these boxes, we won't uh, bore you with all that stuff. We can just kind of buzz right on through it. I don't think we have any baseball coming out next week at least not on Wednesday I think the only thing we've got on Wednesday is score football I don't remember if we have any new baseball on Friday or not I'll have to double check that but even if we don't we have got more Diamond Kings uh, yet to open we've got more Gypsy Queen to open uh, obviously loads more Bowman that's going to be worked into the rotation we're not going to do any more heritage, though. Uh, I got an offer to buy the rest of my heritage in case form, and I just decided to to go ahead and sell it out because I had so much stuff here to break already, and we broke, I don't know, what did we break? Two, three cases of heritage, something like that. So I just decided to go ahead and sell the remaining uh, handful that I had here. So we won't break any more heritage, but... We do have more of everything else. Of course, artist proofs we haven't seen yet either, but when I do see one, I'll point it out to you. It's just a little gold foil stamp when they are when they come out. They're not numbered. A framed Javi Baez for the Cubs. A crowning moment, uh, Stanton. Note he's a Marlin there, Florida Marlins. We'll get that card. And then a flashback uh, for the Expos, which are the Nationals for Vlad Guerrero Sr. Kirk, I don't have any more Inception right now. Uh, we broke quite a bit of it, and I don't have any more. I have thought about whether or not I want to bring some more in. Uh, what did we break of it this year? Like eight cases, maybe? And I usually like to do more like 10, but they didn't give me as many as I wanted this year. Ryan O'Hearn is our hit, autograph hit, and uh, that, of course, is the Kansas City Royals. So if I have to buy any more, it'll be secondary market, so it really will depend on the price, Kirk, and the availability. If I can find anybody else who has it at a reasonable price, 
I certainly wouldn't be opposed to breaking more of it because I like that product quite a bit. So I always uh, am happy to break that in quantity. It's just hard to get in quantity. Philadelphia A's, so Oakland A's for that guy, that old timer. So far, all of our heirs to the throne have been the same team. So, but we will, before we're done, run across plenty, I think, that have two different. Michael Brantley, Cleveland Indians, our relic hit, Diamond Deco uh, quad relics. All white, though. No, they didn't give us any interesting variation in that one, did they? Yeah, they didn't hurt themselves on that one. But they do have a little bit of a tendency to do that, I think. Ted Williams framed Red Sox. Flashback for Tony Gwynn. A Roger Clemens Red Sox framed. Gallery of Stars. The Big Hurt. Once again, when you see them backwards like that, that's how Panini identifies them as short prints. Uh, their definition and mine are slightly different of short print, but either way, that's what it means. Kirk, what did you decide to do with your Carson Wentz? Did you put it up on eBay, or, or are you uh, selling it privately, or what did you decide? What did you decide to do with it? Such a nice card. to start my homework tomorrow trying to memorize uh, the teams that have drafted all these guys. You know, the first round is usually much easier to remember, but by the time you're into like the third and fourth round, trying to remember who took who becomes quite a bit of a task. So I, I have to start training myself. Uh, <laughs> it's like an Olympic sport. I have to train myself to try to remember who goes where and make little cheat sheets in case I forget, you know. Because a lot of the early products, uh, they won't be in their NFL uniforms yet. So you have to have some idea what's going on. Big Poppy, David Ortiz, autograph and relic pairing. Very nice for the Boston Red Sox. Quite nice. I like David Ortiz. Some of these uh, retired guys, you know, you like don't realize. I mean, you kind of realize how good they are when you watch them, but then after they're gone, you kind of think, oh, yeah, I do miss them. Glaber Torres for the New York Yankees. Of course, I'm a Cincinnati Reds fan, as many of you know, so um, I miss everybody from the 70s because it seems like that's the last time we had a good team. <laughs> I know it hasn't really been that long, but it seems like it sometimes. Oh, the Kobe's on there, too. Oh, you got a bunch of good stuff up then, Kirk. You're going to make some money. Kevin Kramer for the Pittsburgh Pirates. That is numbered to 99 dual relics. We have Astros front and back, so we're good to roll on that one. A crowning uh, Ramirez for the Indians. A Rod flashback for Mariners. The the uh, Ortiz there for the Orioles. Uh, of course, was originally facing backwards. So, Randy Johnson, Diamondbacks, Javi Baez, insert Cubs. 
There's an artist proof right there. It is Matt Carpenter. You see that little gold stamp down there on that lower left hand corner. So they're not numbered and I really don't know how many of them they make. Uh, but you figure, you know, if it's stamped artist proof, it's probably not as plentiful as everything else. I would, I would think anyway. So I tend to, I tend to believe we could maybe eke a few extra dollars out of artist proofs. That was a gallery of stars, Otani, Arenado SP. Verlander framed Astros. Brandon, oh, you like that? You like the, the Ortiz autograph? You have the Red Sox. Well, perfect, man. That's awesome. It's a nice hit for you then. Congratulations on that. Um, you, a guy from Australia had the Kobe for 2400 and you think that's high? I don't know. Tell me, uh, you got to refresh my memory. Was it, it was, uh, it wasn't numbered, was it? I mean, it was the French version, the court, you're, we're talking about the ones from Court Kings, right? The insert that ha, I can't pronounce all the words, but the French version, they, and they don't come out very frequently. Um, like any of those inserts with any player on it don't come out very frequently much less with Kobe. But I don't think it was numbered, right? I don't think it was. I mean, honestly, if you really want to just let her rip, truthfully, what I would do with that card, if it were mine, is I would put it up on probably a 7 or a 10 day listing at like $9.99 with no reserve and let her rip. Because there's hardly any of them are going to be on there. Because there are not very many of them made. And if you know the only other person that has one listed has it listed at like a ridiculously high price of $2,400. But that's what people will nonetheless use as a basis of comparison. Unless, you know, you can look at a, unless some have already sold as a model of comparison. But if no others have sold, and that's the only other one listed, buddy, I'd put that bad boy up there at $9.99 for seven, to seven or ten days and let her rip. Because, you know, you'll get a lot of bidding action if yours is priced with no reserve at 10 bucks and the other is priced at 2400 Now, you may not end up at 2400 but based on what you have in the card, you're well going to cover what you have in the card probably times two, three, four without even batting an eye. And it would sell quickly and you'd generate a lot of interest. That's my, that'd be my strategy anyway. Masahiro Tanaka for the New York Yankees dual relic and autograph. Yeah, I mean, I would think, you said you've had offers from 120 to 400. I mean, I would think, now again, this is obviously just an opinion, but if you were to put it up with no reserve and a low starting bid, and there's not any others that have sold, so there's no sales history for uh, comparison on eBay, I would think you would probably end up in, I would imagine, the five to $600 range. That's my thought on it. Could be wrong, but at any case, I don't think you would ever lose money or anything even remotely close to losing money on that one. Reese McGuire, artist proof for the Toronto Blue Jays. Soon to be the home of Vlad Guerrero Jr. Since he's coming up on Friday, finally. I would like to be able to watch that game, but it probably won't be in my stupid market unless they put it on nationally. Jake Bowers, Cleveland Indians, a Kirby Puckett, Minnesota Twins flashback. Crowning moment, Goldschmidt. Heirs to the throne, Forrest Whitley, Nolan Ryan, both Astros, of course. So far, so good with our heirs to the throne. 
This is Kevin Kramer for the Pittsburgh Pirates framed. And the Detroit Tigers have themselves a hit with Christian Stewart. And that is numbered to 99. And again, they kind of got a little boring with their relics, didn't they? Both gray. But some days that's just how they fall. That is a crowning moment. A rod for the Texas Rangers. Trevor Story, Colorado Rockies, SP. Why did I throw that there? I meant to throw it in my pile over here. I saw the one there and I was like, oh, there's my pile. Yeah, not so much. <laughs> Gallery of Stars, Otani. I do keep all those blank white things in a pile, just uh, not usually in the middle of the table. Clearly, my mind wandered for a moment. I started thinking about the Kobe Bryant card again. <laughs> thinking about, wonder how rare that is. I mean, I know it's rare, but they don't ever give us solid numbers on that sort of stuff. I've got a Kobe Bryant one of one autograph of my own that I keep meaning to list on eBay. I haven't done it yet. From, I don't know, two or three years ago. One of the private signings. One so it's, you know, came from Panini encased and everything. All ready to go. I think I've got a one of one Jamal Murray out of private signings too from his rookie year. I don't know what else. I've got a bunch of things like that I need to list, but you know my feeling on it. I hate selling individual cards. The Falcons went with Chris uh, Lindstrom. The Redskins took Dwayne Haskins. Well, I think, yeah, we probably predicted that once, once uh, he was passed on by the Giants. Panthers went with Brian Burns. Okay. You know, I just don't understand really how Daniel Jones was taken ahead of Dwayne Haskins. Not that I'm knocking Daniel Jones, but compared to Dwayne Haskins, I probably would have taken Haskins if I were the Giants. But they didn't, so we'll see what happens. Of course, if I were the Giants, I also still wouldn't have Eli Manning as my quarterback. So, so. Molina, SP. I mean, I get it. It's hard. The guy won a Super Bowl for them. He doesn't want to retire, so they don't want to be the bad guy and force him to retire. And But yet, he probably should have retired a couple of years ago. Um, that was a Gallery of Stars Ichiro, by the way. An artist proof K line for the Tigers. But I don't know that that's really their answer. And the Broncos, of course, I don't know. Broncos always do such weird stuff. <laughs> I am glad, though, that they traded their pick to my Pittsburgh Steelers. I did not hear what we had to give up um, before I had to start the break. So I don't know how how badly they raked us over the coals, but I am glad that we came up and got Devin Bush because we have a big need at inside linebacker. That means we can kind of relax and take a cornerback uh, when we fall to our natural draft spot. Kyle Freeland for the Colorado Rockies. Although, frankly, we've been dreadful at drafting cornerbacks in recent years, which is why we're terrible at the spot. Dontrell Willis, that is framed for uh, the Marlins. But I'm happy with that choice. I, I We needed inside linebacker. So unless we got totally crushed well, with what we had to give up to come up and get Devin Bush, I think that was probably a pretty good deal for us. Paul Molitor, Milwaukee Brewers. <laughs> Brandon says he, he's not messing around. He says Dwayne Haskins is way better. And then he says, well, maybe that's because he lives in Columbus. <laughs> H 
Hey, listen, I, I mean, I think he's he's better uh, than Daniel Jones. I've been wrong before, though, so uh, I don't know. But I, I would have taken him over Daniel Jones, I think. I'm a little bit surprised that went the way that it did. Josh James, and it is numbered 225 for the Astros. A nice two-color relic and autograph. Of course, I do think it's, I mean, I really think the Raiders taking Cleland there where they did seems like so much of a stretch to me. I don't really understand. I don't understand what the Raiders have been doing ever since, uh, Gruden got back there like, what is Chucky doing, man? <laughs> he's, I, I don't understand. He's trading away people they should keep, and he's drafting oddly. And, I mean, I know they've got three first-round picks, but still, that was a just a weird choice for them. Juan Soto Nationals. I mean, I'm not, you know, not that Cleland's not good, but, I mean, good grief. He was... Projected to be late first round into mid second round. So it's not exactly like somebody was going to pick him off the board if they wanted to wait and get him even late first round. <laughs> Matt Chapman for the Oakland A's. But I don't know. I guess uh, Gruden building his little empire. I guess he knows what he's doing. I don't know. Kirk, you need some Nationals, Twins, and Orioles hits. All right. Mojo request accepted and processed. We'll see if the Mojo will uh, answer it. We'll answer your request for more hits or some hits. We're going to try. Uh, Giants took, just took Dexter Lawrence. Okay. Did Ed Oliver go off the board? I'm guessing he did. I'm guessing he went way back, uh, but I didn't. I didn't see anything um, really past Josh Allen, and I was even having to work through part of the stuff before that. Obviously, getting ready for the break and whatnot. But Josh, uh, my Kentucky Wildcat, Josh Allen is the last thing I saw going to the Jags with uh, pick number six. So, Ed Oliver may have already, I would hope, I would think, has already come out, but I don't know where he went. He went to the Bills. Okay, ninth to the Bills. Well, that's actually a pretty good landing spot for him. And that should be helpful for, yeah, I, I, th I think that's a good, a good match, a good fit. There's Kyle Tucker, Houston Astros. Tukey framed Atlanta Braves. And we have Mike Trout on the front, Mickey Mantle on the back. There's our first heirs to the throne that happens to have two different teams. So that is why it is sitting up there in our little housekeeping area, right? To remind us that we've got to remind me so we've got to do something with it at the end of the break. Jake Bowers framed Cleveland Indians. Nolan Ryan, Texas Rangers. And since I'm hitting everybody up for information tonight, um, does anybody know how, <laughs> how my Reds Braves ended? Once the draft started, I was uh, just flipped over to the game like once or twice, and it was the last I saw... Reds were up three zip on the Braves, but I'm I'm sure the score didn't stay that way. Brooks Robinson, artist proof for the Baltimore Orioles. And that game should be well over. Um, Reds Braves, I mean, one would certainly hope anyway that it is long since over. Cleveland Indians, Jose Ramirez framed 
comes a Uraeus autograph for the San Diego Padres. I said autograph. It's a relic. My bad. My bad. We already saw our autograph out of this box, and I was thinking it was the opposite, that we'd only seen the relic, but it was the Astros that was autograph and relic. Sorry, sorry. Relic only there, kids. Cal Ripken, Baltimore Orioles. Beltre for the Dodgers in a flashback. Insert. Oh, I guess we hadn't seen an autograph out of this box. Thought we did. Guess we didn't, because uh, there is one. Ryan McMahon. Colorado Rockies, and it is numbered to 99. We have Astros on the front, Astros on the back, so that one's good to go. All right, what do we have left? We've got six left, so that means we are at our halfway point. Six have been opened and six remain. Vikings took Garrett Bradbury. I don't know anything about Garrett Bradbury. I don't even know, I mean, what position is he even? I don't know, I don't know him at all. I'm guessing since he went first round, I should know who he is, but I don't. Oh, he's a center. Okay. Well, there you go. The position that I would know the absolute least amount possible about. I don't follow that very closely. I will freely admit it. Let's see what we've got. Our autograph showing up right away. Minnesota Twins with Jake. Is it Cave or Cave? Uh, am I getting too fancy there? Just thinking it's like, oh, it's Cave. <laughs> it's probably entirely Cave. Uh, those are both Chicago Cubs on that one. I don't know. Every once in a while I just get all fancy. <laughs> Francisco Lindor, insert for the Cleveland Indians. Brandon wants to know how long it takes to sort Diamond Kings. It takes a long time, brother. It is not fun. Rowdy to Les for the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, because you really have, I mean, I really have to like stop and think about it. Because like this guy, for instance, right? Mickey Cochran, he, it says Philadelphia, so if you were sorting in a hurry, you'd be like, oh, he's a Philly and send him to the Phillies, but that would be wrong uh, because he was a Philadelphia A, which is the current o uh, Philadelphia A's, uh, which is the current Oakland A's, which is where that card is going, of course, to Oakland. But when you're sorting without having to worry about those sorts of things, or like this guy that'll go to the San Francisco Giants, I could sort this, um, I mean, not like super fast, but it wouldn't take me all day to get it sorted and shipped. But because I have to stop and like, I can't just do it so quickly, I have to stop and give it a little bit of thought occasionally. I can't just autopilot it. It definitely does take longer to sort. Satchel Page, once again, as St. Louis Browns of old, are the Baltimore Orioles in today's world, and that artist proof heads to the Orioles. And honestly, the sorting is not even the slowest part. Mickey Mantle for the Yankees. 
the slowest part is getting it all actually ready to ship. So getting it in, uh, you know, team bags or, or the storage boxes or whatever I ship it in. Getting it in that and then uh, safely, securely ready to go to the post office, weighed, then get the labels printed and attached and actually out the door. That part takes longer than the sorting part, believe it or not. So yeah, a 12 box of Diamond Kings probably will take all that, maybe about four hours top to bottom. That was the Red Sox. I mean, from the time I start on it until the time the last label is on it and it's ready to go kind of deal. Joe Morgan, Cincinnati Reds. The actual sorting, though, probably an hour. Maybe a little over, but about an hour. The rest of it is what takes uh, all that extra time. Boo hiss. We don't like that, do we? Well, I don't. <laughs> Probably don't bother you all. You're like, yeah, no matter what us. <laughs> We're not the ones doing it. <laughs> but this is, you know, spring is always this way. Because everything that is base heavy starts coming out. In the early part of the baseball season, you know, Bowman, Diamond Kings, Heritage, Gypsy Queen. Uh, of course, we started out with Series 1, and then we just, you know, then we roll into Allen and Genter and Heritage High Number and Stadium Club and on and on and on. All of them with tremendous numbers of base cards. So, spring is always a time when there's a lot of. It takes a long time to get the brakes out the door. That's honestly why sometimes I cut things in half and we'll do a half case of something instead of a whole case. Uh, a lot of times it just has to do with the sheer volume of cards. Not only from a sorting perspective, but also from a shipping perspective. Uh, because then you start getting into weight issues and, you know, things having to all go priority mail. And there's all kinds of fun little things that factor in. Jeffrey Simmons went to the Titans, Tennessee. All right. You're so good to keep me updated, Kirk. I appreciate that so much. New York Mets, Cindergard framed. An artist proof for the Colorado Rockies, Trevor Story. And a portrait of Glaber Torres for the New York Yankees. Cedric Mullins, Orioles framed. Kevin Kramer, Pittsburgh Pirates, possibly the second one of those we've seen tonight, I think. You know me, I would not absolutely swear to it, but I think it is. We'll recap later, of course, and then we'll get an opportunity to find out for certain. Altuve and Biggio, both Astros, so we don't have to worry about that one. Verlander insert, Ken Griffey Jr. insert. A Shohei Otani insert. The DK205 inserts, like the Shohei that we just saw, that's a Shohei short print, is pretty much my favorite insert this year. I love the looks of them. Pittsburgh Pirates. Oh, sorry, technically a, a short print, being as how it was turned around backwards and all. Chris Davis, Oakland A's, framed. What did you say your aunt Kirk said that's what I'm here for besides the hits? What 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 else are you here for? <laughs> I know it's something I probably said a minute ago, but yet I don't remember it. 
I know, I know. Well, there's that little bit of delay, right? From the time you type it in until the time I see it. And then I've forgotten what I said. <laughs> Beltre for the Rangers. Mike Trout on one side, Mickey Mantle on the opposite. It's going to hang out right up there in the housekeeping. Ty Cobb, Tigers. There it is, right there. That's my favorite insert, the DK205s. I like those. It's a Cunha. Oh, maybe that's what you meant you were here for. Oh, you meant keeping me updated is what you're here for. <laughs> See, I was completely off the mark. Totally not even in the zip code of, <laughs> of what you were referring to. Oh, man. Well, I do appreciate you, Kirk. So thank you for that, for keeping me updated. I actually taped it, too. Is that weird that I taped the draft? I mean, it probably is a little bit weird because you can just get the results anywhere, but I don't know. I kind of wanted to go back and see it. I don't really know why. I don't know. <laughs> There's no real advantage to watching it beyond the first three or four picks, but... I want to anyway, or at least certainly once you get out of the green room choices, because then they're not there alive. Although I did note Haskins, uh, of course, decided not to go to the green room, so he was, I guess, listening to all those rumors that were saying he might fall in the draft and he didn't want to sit in the green room and wait, so good on him. I mean, last year was brutal watching Lamar Jackson set in that green room. Oy. I hate when that happens to those guys, basketball or football, when they're expected to go and they don't go where they, where they think they're going to or where they were projected to, and then they're just sitting there waiting, waiting. The rest of the green room is emptied out. They're still there. Oh, it's awful. Francisco Lindor, Cleveland Indians framed. Cedric Mullins, Baltimore Orioles framed. Kikuchi, you say Kikuchi, Seattle Mariners, SP. Matthew says that we had any good hits so far. Um, well... I mean, yeah, I like the David Ortiz. I can't speak to uh, like everybody else, but I like the David Ortiz myself for the Red Sox. Minnesota Twins framed another heirs to the throne. Those are both Yankees. Or were they both Yankees? Yeah. So then we don't have to do anything with that. I saw Clemens and for a minute I was like, wait a minute, that didn't say Red Sox, did it? No, it didn't. Kyle Tucker, Houston Astros, dual relic. But Matthew, I would say we haven't had, you know, any, any, uh, you know, thousand dollar cards or anything show up yet if that's what you mean oh we did have the case hit though the downtown case hit is out for the brewers with yelich javi baez cubs Jose Altuve, Astros insert. Bryce Wilson, Atlanta Braves. That is number 225. Ooh, I'm about to sneeze. Ooh, hang on. Sorry, sorry. Excuse me. Ooh. I didn't sneeze on my hand, for those of you worried about that sort of thing. Nor am I actually germy sick that you have to worry about that. It's just allergies. 
And I sneezed into like the part of my arm, like you're supposed to, not into my hands. So it's not, you don't have any allergy pollen on your cards, I promise. <laughs> oh, I wish we didn't have any in the air either, but this stupid rain just really flared it up way worse. We have open nine. We have three remaining, counting the one that's coming out of the wrappers right now. Three remaining. We have one more 12 box case of Diamond Kings, and that's the last of that I have on hand, too. Um, not that I couldn't get more, I'm sure that I could, but most likely once we break it, we'll then just shift our focus to finishing up on Diamond Kings, or finishing up on, um, ah, Gypsy Queen and, and Bowman. I'll probably spread the Bowman out a little bit, though. It's good to open any time. Doesn't matter when you open that. I might even save some for next year. Wouldn't that be radical? I might, though. You never know. Bryce Harper, Nationals. I'm sorry. I said Bryce Harper, Nationals. Of course, he's no longer a National. That's just habit. Although, it does say Washington on that card. So, okay. He does go to the Nationals on that card. After I said it, I'm like, oh, maybe I need to go back and check it. Ty Cobb framed for the Tigers. All righty. De Los Santos Phillies framed. One thing I've noticed is none of our framed cards are numbered this year in here, and it used to be that some of our framed cards were numbered, weren't they? I want to say they were. They have been in the past. Colby Allard for the Atlanta Braves. Dual relics and signature. That is Nationals front and back. An artist proof. Muto when he was still a Marlin. So, hi, hi. A little artist proof headed to the Miami Marlins. Houston front and back on that one. Pujols uh, as a St. Louis Cardinal on that card. And a Reese Hoskins, Philadelphia Phillies. With a Jersey Kings, and we got a little pinstripe. Yay! Yay, yay! I like to get the pinstripes when we get relics for baseball. Portrait Ricky Henderson for the A's. Rowdy Telez uh, Blue Jays. A Rod flashback. Trevor Story framed Rockies. Ricky Henderson, Oakland A's. All right. That was box number 10 of 12. We have two left. Oh, the Broncos got Noah Fant. That's a good, that's a nice draft choice for them, too. I'm kind of uh, sad that he's off the board, though, truthfully. I wouldn't have minded having him hang around till he maybe got down to my Steelers, but... I mean, for whatever reason, we seem to have a problem with tight end and cornerback in the, when we draft. I don't really know what our deal is, but we draft O-line and D-line pretty well, but not corners, not tight ends.
Oh, poor Noah Fant. He's got to go play with old 5,000-year-old Joe Flacco out in Denver. <laughs> you know, he's just like, oh, man. I mean, even if you like the Broncos, like, are you excited that Joe Flacco is going to be your quarterback? I just can't imagine that you are, even if you are a Denver fan. That's... I mean, Joe Flacco is just not an exciting quarterback, and he's old. Of course, I'm one to talk. Big Ben for my Steelers is like 5,000 years old, too. I keep thinking he's going to turn out like the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. They're going to have to, like, go out in the huddle and oil his joints or something. <laughs> he's, he's, I mean, he's always banged up, but... Statistically speaking, he had an excellent year last year, Ben did. So it's nice that Hawkinson and Fant both got off the board first round. I mean, they projected that they both would, but you never know how those things are going to turn out, so... Teammates from Iowa. A little tight end producing factory. There it is, Iowa. Albert Pajols. St. Louis Cardinals. Danny Jansen. I haven't seen a Danny Jansen autograph in a while. Toronto Blue Jays. Hit with Danny Jansen to 49. Stan Musial framed St. Louis Cardinals. And here comes a Shohei Otani Jersey Kings, I think it is. Let's see if we get a pinstripe on this one. No, we don't. But anyway, I mean, hey. That's okay. Shohei will be back as a DH at some point. Actually, probably fairly soon. Assuming everything is healing up okay. I would expect him to maybe start showing up June, July-ish uh, as a designated hitter. Not going to see him pitch this year, obviously. But if he can still swing that bat, that'll help your card values. Number 225, a portrait for Ricky Henderson and the Oakland A's. It's our first numbered card of the night, I think, actually. That isn't autographed. Anyway. Uh, look at that. Ricky Henderson again. Imagine that. Different card, obviously. But and that was Larry Dobby for the Cleveland Indians. Or Doby, one of the two. Artist proof. Jimmy Fox. That's some old school throwback right there. Boston Red Sox. Artist proof. It was a Kirby Puckett flashbacks. Bryce Harper for the Nats. We have Houston front and back. I love it when a plan comes together. Ozzy, Atlanta Braves framed. Last box mojo, kids. If we have not yet hit what you're looking for, now is the time to work the mojo and let's try to get it out of this last box. Try to get some fiery big hits. Of course, you know what? We don't know what that redemption is. That may be a fiery big hit. Well, we don't know yet because we're going to flip it over at the very end. So basically it will work like this. We will, uh, of course, look through this last box. Then we'll flip over that redemption, find out who's on the other side of it, and then use the Panini website to find out what, if anything, it's numbered to. After we do that, we'll take a look at our little pile of heirs to the throne. 
and see uh, if we need to send some of that to random or not. And then after that, we'll recap. So that's basically the order in which things are about to happen here in the next uh, few little minutes. Kirk says he's got to have some Nats mojo. Looking for some Washington Nationals. Trying to bring it home for you, Kirk. I'm trying, my friend. I'm trying. Trying to make you some money. Do you resell most of your stuff, Kirk? Do you keep any of it, like, in a personal collection? Do you have a favorite team or something that you stash for yourself and then sell the rest? Or is it, or do you flip uh, the majority of it? Which you don't have to answer if you don't want to. I was just curious. Kyle Tucker, Houston Astros. I guess that was being kind of nosy, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry. That is the Yankees with a crowning moment. Hey, look at that. It worked for you. Ha! Huh. How about that? There's Victor, numbered to 99 for the Nationals. Victor Hope, he's just like that. It's like, it's like magic, Kirk. You just called it out and it appeared for you. So, last box mojo indeed, my friend. Alex Bregman framed Houston Astros. And an Aaron Nola, Philadelphia Philly, artist proof. Oh, you have a big Rod Carew collection? That's cool. Isn't it frustrating, though, the way Topps does uh, Rod Carew? It seems like they'll take one year, they'll make him... Uh, mostly the Twins, and then another year they'll mostly make him the Angels, and they don't, you know, there's no consistency as to which team you're going to find him, so you really have to pay attention with him. Jeff McNeil and the Mets, it just requires, you know, extra work. It's like, come on, Panini, can't you just make him one or the other, you know, <laughs> I mean, just, or rather tops, I said Panini, but rather tops. Just make him either an, an angel or uh, that's Nolan Ryan and the Rangers. Or a twin, but they never do. They never do. Hey, that Kirk, you didn't even get excited over hitting your Victor Robles, even though you asked for Nats Mojo, and that didn't even, that didn't even elicit a response, man. <laughs> it was not Victor you were looking for, I'm going to take it. Diamond Deco, Seattle Mariners, Ken Griffey Jr. Quad Relics is our last uh, hit live out of uh, this break anyway. Aguilar Brewers. That's Nationals front and back, so it stays where it is. Brad Keller, Kansas City Royals framed. Chris Sale and Pedro Martinez, both Red Sox, front and back. So it stays. Whoops, hang on. Somebody was stuck in behind. Chipper Jones was uh, stuck in behind Jacob Nix. So that's all of the stuff that we need to break. This is the stuff that we need to recap. But in the meantime, we still have a redemption to flip over. Yeah, we have to see what is here, what is important. I hope Matthew's like, what's the redemption on the table? Yeah, we never know. See, that's the thing, Matthew. I keep them face down until the end of the break. I always do, every break. Then we flip them over at the end and find out who they are. It's George freaking Brett. That's all kinds of awesome. I love me some George Brett. Retro 1983 DK Material Signature Hollow Blue. That bad boy's going to be numbered. Kansas City Royals, look at you go. I love that. Love, love, love that hit. But meanwhile, let's let's find out from Panini what they're going to number it to. Obviously, uh, I didn't reset this after I last used it, did I? I guess. Oh, all right. Well, I guess I got to do it like this. I don't know. <laughs> I know. They redesigned their website. Kept me some slack. I'm still getting used to it. Diamond Kings, and what did I say our card set was? A big, long one. Retro 1983 DK Materials, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, retro night, hollow blue. That's it. Card number 20 should be our man, George Brett. He is going to be numbered to 25. Oh, I'm, I might be a little bit jealous of that. Let me tell you what. I am a, I'm just a little bit jealous of that hit for Kansas City. So, Royals, congratulations. That's, uh, in my opinion, a great hit. So, now we'll put that up there in our little recap pile. We only have two heirs to the throne that happen to have um, more, you know a different team on the front than is on the back and aren't we lucky that we have exactly two well if i could get the second one in this stupid sleeve we have exactly two they're exactly the same they are identical they are not numbered there's no variation whatsoever so guess what i'm gonna do that's right I'm going to send one to the Angels and the other one to the Yankees. You guys are going to share. I know, right? And then it means we don't have to send any to random. All the other heirs to the throne that we saw in this break were the same team front and back. Okay. So... As a recap, Oakland A's, that is number 25 portrait insert for Ricky Henderson. We had a case hit, a downtown insert for Mr. Christian Yelich of the Milwaukee Brewers. No cut signature tonight, so presumably one would think it would be in the second 12 box case. But I will say the last master case we did had neither a downtown or a cut signature. It was weird. George Brett Redemption, Kansas City Royals, will be numbered to 25. Oh, Matthew, you said you were just thinking about buying that Griffey Deco on eBay, and you just hit it? <laughs> well, that's awesome. Then see, you saved yourself some money. Seattle Mariners with Ken Griffey Jr., Diamond Deco, Quad Relics. Victor Robles for the Nats, numbered to 99. And so Kirk's, you know, his, his wish for... Last box mojo being a national came true, but sadly, he didn't want Victor. He's already got a bunch of Victor. Sho Shohei Otani, Jersey Kings for the Angels. Toronto Blue Jays hit Danny Jansen to 49. Jersey Kings, Reese Hoskins, Phillies. We did get a pinstripe on it. The Braves, Colby Allard, Relic and Signature. Next up... For Hotlanta, Bryce Wilson, numbered to 25. Houston Astros, Kyle Tucker, dual relics. Dual relics for Adrian Beltre and the Texas Rangers. Next up, Pittsburgh Pirates hit with Kevin Kramer. My Cincinnati Reds got a cool throwback, George Moore. Or Joe Morgan. I'm still thinking about that George Brett card. Joe Morgan. Threads. Dual relics. Jake Cave. Minnesota. Minnesota. Minnesota A. This one is numbered to 99. Colorado Rockies. Ryan McMahon. Dual relics for the San Diego Padres with Urias. Um, these are actually really cool relics, especially the top one. It's for the Astros. It's numbered to 25. Uh, the top relic is really quite awesome. In particular, it is Josh James. Then we find ourselves with a dual relic here for the Brewers with uh, Paul Molitor. Stewart came out numbered to 99 for the Detroit Tigers with a dual relic. This is uh, autograph and relic new york yankees tanaka cool relics for the pittsburgh pirates to 99. there's big poppy boston red sox david ortiz autograph and relic a diamond deco quad relic for michael brantley and the cleveland indians Kansas City Royals already had Ryan O'Hearn, but still they added to their tally with that fantastic George Brett card that, yeah, I'm still thinking about. <laughs> and we got things started tonight with Patrick Wisdom, number 225 for the Texas Rangers. 
All right, so that's the break. That's the recap. I'm going to put up the spreadsheet info here one final time. So if anybody missed it earlier, you want to know your anticipated shipping date and or what we're breaking in the days ahead, it's flying your way right now. Expecting this stuff to ship to you most likely on Monday. If I can get it out faster than Monday, I most certainly will do so. And if my week doesn't go quite as planned, it could always uh, slide a day later into Tuesday. But I believe that Monday is a pretty reasonable estimate. Every team pull cards in Diamond Kings. We're not worried about that. If you got skunked in Leaf Metal Draft, you are still going to get a package in the mail. And it will have consolation cards in it. And you might have better luck there. You never know. Our breaks that are coming up. This stuff's already listed on eBay. It's what we're going to be breaking over the next five days. Tomorrow night we're starting early. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Because guess why? Oh yeah. It's National Treasures Basketball Release Day. Woohoo! It's like a party. It's a party in a box. We will open a case of NT Basketball. And another case of Contenders Draft Picks Football. Saturday, a five-box case of TriStar Game Day Greats autographed football jerseys and a half case of Gypsy Queen back half of the case. Sunday, we're going to start 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific there as well. We will open a 20-box case of 2018 Honors Football. It's the last case of that I have. And a six-box half case of Bowman Baseball, the back half of a case. Monday, Hit Parade Triple Play Baseball. It's got three autographed memorabilia items in it. A second case, a uh, second five box case of TriStar Game Day Greats Autograph Football jerseys, and a second case of NT Basketball. On Tuesday, we'll get back into the groove with Flawless Football and also Contenders Draft Picks Football. And that's it, right? That's all the news. That's all the 411 for tonight. So once again, thank you everyone for being here, spending part of your evening with me. And I always appreciate you bidding, breaking, chatting with me, keeping me up to date on scores and draft information while we're busy breaking. I always appreciate you. So thanks very much. Have a fantastic rest of your night. And uh, I'll be back at it again tomorrow night. We'll see you the next time. Bye now.